Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am doing another holistic remedies and recipe video. Um, and I'm just gonna be sharing with you guys a few things that I like to make for pain management and also stress management and some natural remedies for cold and flu and just a few things that we use around our home. So I hope you guys enjoy this video and I'm just gonna jump right in. So let's start first with some cold and flu remedies that are a little bit more natural and holistic. Uh, elderberry is something we kind of run to every time we start to feel a cold or flu coming on in our home and you can find like elderberry gummies and things like that but you can make elderberry syrup and I'm sure a lot of you have probably heard of this recipe. This was adapted from the a recipe that I found in my herbal studies that I'm doing and so I have some elderberries here some water, some ginger, and I'm just cooking that up and letting that come to a boil. I'm gonna let that simmer for about 45 minutes. There are several different elderberry recipes. I'm gonna add some cinnamon sticks and also some clove to mine as well, which is not in every single recipe that you'll find. And after 45 minutes, I'm gonna go ahead and strain it and just press it down with a wooden spoon just to get everything out of there. And go ahead and let that cool down for well, until it's about room temperature, so about 45 minutes to an hour, depending on how long it takes to cool down. Now, raw honey is typically used in elderberry syrup. It also gives an additional immune boost, but you don't want to give that to babies, of course, under the age of one. Um, you can replace it with maple syrup or a really nutrient-rich molasses, or you can make an elderberry tincture for adults. But elderberries are really high in immune-boosting compounds that are really great specifically for cold and flu. So just a teaspoon uh, is great when you feel something coming on. I get dried elderberries from a local herb shop, but I will also recommend, uh, I think Mountain Rose Herbs has dried elderberries. You just wanna make sure you cook them. You cannot eat them. Uh, raw. Now next I'm making fire cider and I have some garlic from the garden. This is fresh and ready to go. This is a fire cider shot and you can either take a little bit of this with eight ounces of water every morning if you're starting to feel cold coming on or you could just take a solid shot of this. So I have this beautiful fresh garlic from the garden. I'm gonna put three or four cloves in there so this is gonna this is gonna keep everyone away. Um, <laughs> I put some horseradish in there, grating up some ginger. Gonna go ahead and put that in there as well. I'm gonna cover that with apple cider vinegar. I add cayenne pepper for a little bit of a kick. If you don't like spice, you might wanna keep that away, but that's just gonna kind of warm you up inside and uh, really help fight the cold or flu that you feel coming on. And then you can add a little honey as well just to make it a little bit more palatable. And uh, again, you can just have a little bit of this with water in the morning or you can have a nice solid shot of this. And this does really help kick a cold in the butt. For storage, I'm gonna cover this with some wax paper, put it in the refrigerator for about a week, week and a half, two weeks is the max, and elderberry is the same. Okay, so next I'm moving on to my favorite de-stress tea blend. These three herbs that I love to blend together for an anti-stress tea, I actually grow all of them separately. So starting with chamomile, I'm just gonna go ahead and harvest that. I'm cutting from the stems. This is lemon balm, which is a part of the mint family. And then I also have catnip. Now we usually know catnip to make cats crazy, but in adults and even in children, it's very relaxing and it's a natural way to de-stress and relax. So what I'm doing is I'm tying each of these bundles with a little bit of twine, and then I'm gonna hang them up on my drying rack. A lot of you guys, cause I share this on my Instagram a lot, will ask me when I dry them, do they get bird poop on them or anything like that? Well, I tend to, grow, you know, these herbs are outside. So sometimes that does happen. And I tend to just pick and compost the herbs that, you know, that has happened to. But most of the time I don't have to worry about that. And I put that on the rack, this is on my back porch here, and I just let that dry for a few days, usually about three days or so. And after that, it's gonna look really crunchy and pretty much ready to go. So I keep an eye on that, and it's really pretty on you know my back porch there, and it smells really nice. And once it's ready to go, I just take it down, and I can start making my tea. Starting with chamomile, I harvested just a little bit, so I have this bundle here, and I'm going to take off the flowers. So I'm gonna take some scissors 
and just cut the flowers off. A few stems are okay, but you wanna avoid stems overall. And I have a small little mason jar here. I'm just gonna go ahead and put all of the chamomile inside. And the flowers will kind of shrivel up a little bit and that's completely normal, that's how it looks. And um, you can use the entire flower for the tea. Now for the lemon balm and catnip, it gets so dry that you can pretty much just rub it through your fingers and it essentially becomes tea. You can essentially choose how fine you want your tea to be. If you're gonna put it in tea bags or mason jars, it's really up to you and uh, your preference. So I'm making three different jars. We have one for chamomile, we have one for catnip, and one for lemon balm. And then that just means I can choose to have one or the other on any given day, or you can blend them together if you wanted to. And then I have this uh, little tea strainer. We used to sell these in my shop, and it's great. I use it all the time. You just put a little bit, just like, little bit of each one in there to create a blend and I'm gonna go ahead and pour some water over that and just let that steep and you can just enjoy that any time of the day it doesn't make you sleepy it just is a very natural just calming tea you know it's just like a de-stress calming tea so try that blend out and I hope you really like it okay moving on to some pain relief some remedies I'm not sure if I've had like a pinched nerve or something going on, but I've been struggling a little bit. So I love to do stretches on my Pilates machine. There's a few that I really love, but I also really love um, different apps. And I've actually been really bad about working out. I'm going to be completely honest. I haven't been consistent at all lately. Um, I have the Aloe Yoga app, and I've been trying to be better about doing uh you know stretching and yoga my chiropractor actually recommended yoga to me and wanted me to do it really consistently they have several different flows on there but just a really good stretch uh feels so great to just relax the body when you're feeling stiff and um i practice several hours of piano so i get a stiff neck and my shoulder has been kind of uncomfortable and i've had a lot of different things and yoga has definitely really helped a lot Another thing that I love is CBD. I've talked about CBD here on my channel now for, I think I mentioned it for the first time like a year and a half ago. And I know for some people it's kind of like taboo in a lot of senses because it is cannabis. But CBD specifically has no psychoactive effects, but it's very, very beneficial for inflammation, for pain, for stress. My friend has this really beautiful company with CBD bath bombs called Kush Queen. She also has bath bombs that are CBD and THC. So if THC is legal, um, sometimes small doses of THC with larger doses of CBD, you still don't have any psychoactive effects, but it's even more helpful for pain management. An Epsom salt bath, is also really great and I like to kind of combine the two so I'll do a CBD bath balm with some Epsom salt and I've been taking a lot more baths recently um, and then also I like to listen to a really relaxing or calming book when I'm in the bath so I've been listening to Box of Butterflies by Roma Downey. Going back to CBD for pain management there are a few that I really like um, I don't use them at the same time, but this is a CBD. This is Nano CBD by a company called My Hempel, so just a little bit under your tongue. Another brand that I recently found out about when I was in more pain was by a company called Sweet Jane, and they have pure CBD, but they also have different ratios with uh, microdoses of THC. And what's great about that is because it has significantly more CBD, it counter affects any negative side effects of THC. So you don't get any of the psychoactive, you don't get a high, um, but the THC activates the CBD. So you get a little bit more of a boost in terms of pain reduction. So recently a doctor tried to recommend pain medicine for me and I didn't want to take it because the handout was a little scary with the side effects. So I just stuck to this and it worked really well. I took a little bit at night before I went to bed. Another thing that I use is this heating mat. This is a gemstone heating mat. My acupuncturist actually has sessions where you can lay on one of these in her office. They have many benefits to those who are struggling from chronic pain or illnesses. Um, there are a lot of different benefits that you can research. I'm actually gonna put an article that's pretty interesting below with uh, 12 different science-backed benefits of a gemstone mat. Just because I know when you, when you hear gemstone, it can kind of seem kind of like, does that really even do anything? But there's a lot of really cool benefits to it. And I've really enjoyed having one. So I really appreciate you guys watching my channel. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.